So as we've seen, dynamical systems are capable of producing chaotic behavior, aperiodic, unpredictable, irregular outcomes. But there's a lot more in the world than just chaos, than just unpredictability, and, and happily so. There's patterns, there's structure, there's organization, yes, and chaos and randomness and unpredictability and the butterfly too, but the world around us is a really interesting mix of patterns and irregularities. We might ask, though, how do these patterns emerge? Where do they come from? How can they form? Since many of them seem to be formed without any design or with any direction. Where in Newton's laws, um, the basic laws of electromagnetism, Maxwell's equations, um, these simple, you know, the world is fundamentally made up of simple particles. How do we produce these um, incredibly complex phenomena like you and me, and um, all the other surroundings around us. And so, you know, dynamical systems, I think, doesn't answer that question, of course, but shed some light on it, because it says that iterated systems, like these iterated functions, or um, dynamical systems, like differential equations, or the partial differential equations we studied in this unit, that that act of repetition, of feedback on itself, of doing the same thing over and over again, has some surprising creativity built into it. That that act of repetition, you can take a simple process and simple ingredients and get things out that maybe aren't so simple. So maybe this can uh, begin to shed light or is an important intuition or realization as we think about the patterns and structures around us and how they might arise. Let me give a few examples to illustrate um, sort of what I mean by patterns emerging without direction. So, um, the first example is the building in which my office is in at College of the Atlantic. It's a building known as the turrets because it has lots of turrets on it. And this building was designed, like most buildings. Somebody made it and somebody designed it. And in fact, I know who it was. I don't know personally, it was a long time ago. Um, Bruce Price was the architect of this building here in Maine. Apparently he's a famous architect. He built uh, Le, uh, Le Chateau Frontenac, the Hotel Frontenac in um, Quebec City, a very famous landmark hotel that if you've ever traveled there, <coughs> you've, you've surely seen. It's a big hotel on a, on a, on a, on a bluff. Um, so anyway, turrets, it's a complex structure. It's patterned. Um, it's, it's a great building, a beautiful old building. My office is the sort of second window on the left there. It's a, it's a great location. <coughs> um, this is certainly a pattern, some sort of structure. My office, well, my office is chaos. The building is not chaos, though. Um, and, but it was, that's not that surprising because somebody built this to not be chaos. On the other hand, if you um, look outside of my office window and you crane your neck just a little bit or you turn around from where that uh, picture of turrets was, you'll see this tree. It's a copper beech tree. Um, and it's just this amazingly beautiful tree. I don't know how old it is. I don't think they're native to here. In the summer, uh, they have like almost purple leaves. Um, it's copper, they're darker than usual leaves. Um, but the structure of the tree in the snow, which is sort of what it looks like now because it's been snowing for months and months, um, is this amazing structure. Again, you would look at this tree and you wouldn't say chaos. So, yes, there's some irregularity. Um, so here, who made the tree? Well, that's a little less clear. Um, it wasn't designed by an architect the way the building was. There may be some designs in DNA, but there, it, even then, it's more of an organic process, something that, that, that grows. Um, as the tree is growing, the tree probably isn't checking some master plans some blueprints the way as turrets was being built. Somebody, as they're putting the bricks together, was checking blueprints or a master plan. Um, so uh, here's an example, the tree, of a pattern shape that, um, in a sense, wasn't built. It certainly wasn't built the same way that my building, my office building was. Um, here's another example. These are altostratus clouds. These pictures are from a friend and colleague, Sarah Hall, who teaches geology here um, at College of the Atlantic. She took this picture. And one can see nice structures, and in fact, apparently, Sarah tells me, these are from convection rolls up in the atmosphere where, where the clouds are, and they form these structures. So again, you might ask, well, who made this? And that question seems almost silly, I hope. Nobody made those clouds. The clouds just 
did their own thing and they're not thinking about patterns at all. They're just obeying the simple laws of physics, just like the um, reaction diffusion equations obey the simple laws of physics that we write down or simple laws of chemistry, and we get these um, patterns in the reaction diffusion system, not that different these patterns that we see up in clouds. So here it's a case of maybe clear self-organization. It's not organization from above. The cloud is not referring to any almanac of clouds or um, um, master plan or cloud blueprint. It's just doing its own thing, following the laws of physics, differential equations, and in fact, it's iterating itself, and these patterns emerge. They appear. Um, one last example. College of Atlantic is right next to Acadia National Park, which has um, Cadillac Mountain, which is actually not a mountain by most standards. It's not that tall, but the view from it is still amazing. This is a view from a top Cadillac Mountain. Um, the college, I don't think you can see it in this picture, but it's down sort of on the coast. But again, you would look out at this landscape and say, well, who made that? And again, it sort of seems like a silly question. All sorts of geological processes made the coast and um, the immediate coast, the, the coast you're looking off to another peninsula, and then there are a bunch of islands uh, in front, and one can see, if you look carefully, a, a swamp area with a little bit of a wandering stream. Anyway, so all of this pattern, you wouldn't look at this and say, oh, it's just chaos. All of this pattern and structure must come from somewhere. And um, dynamical systems suggests that, not that patterns are easy to make, but well, maybe some patterns are act actually are sort of easy to make, and that they can just arise on their own without um, a designer or a master plan. So I guess one lesson I would take from this is as follows. If in the study of complex systems, we see some sort of patterned or structure, structured outcome or behavior, maybe in a biological system or a social system, our impulse might be to ask, especially in a social system, who built that? Who did that? Who made that? Why is that happening? Assuming there's some purpose or design. And indeed, it could be that there was some intentionality by, again, whatever the system is, some social system, in producing that outcome. But dynamical systems, the study of dynamical systems points out that one can also get structured or pattern outcome without any design or purpose or intentionality. Things can self-organize. Sometimes we can get order or patterns or structures for free. So um, again, the, one of the themes of the course, that simple iterated systems, simple dynamical systems do not necessarily have um, simple behavior. They can behave, deterministic systems can behave unpredictably and aperiodically, and simple systems can also produce patterns and outcomes of surprising richness and complexity. So this brings us to the end of Unit 9, and it's almost the end of the course. In Unit 10, which will be the last unit, I'll summarize some of what we've covered so far and try to draw some conclusions and pull together some themes. As part of this, I'll conduct a few interviews with other researchers and teachers in the areas of dynamical systems and chaos to get some different perspectives and draw out some ideas. So we'll see you next week in Unit 10.